Oh my gosh. This NFL season, it is just throwing twists and turns every week. And these Pittsburgh Steelers, whoo, it has just deteriorated even more. You know I always just like to start with the love with these videos. I always try to start talking about the team that won and giving them their props. But right now we gotta talk about these Steelers. And where else to start besides Juju Smith-Schuster? I'm usually someone that likes to let these guys have fun out there. You know, I never get mad at anyone for celebrating. I always say, if you score, let them celebrate. You, if you gotta stop them from scoring. But Juju Smith-Schuster, he's not doing anything to earn the him dancing on the dancing on the logos before games. He's doing nothing to earn that. If it was Tyreek Hill or if it was Devontae Adams, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But Juju Smith-Schuster, the way these Steelers are going and Doing it before the games where you're not in the end zone deserving a celebration or anything like that. Putting on TikTok trying to get famous. I don't know. I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go too crazy about it. Say it's the reason they lost or anything like that. But what I will say is I didn't mind seeing Von Bell blow him up and get that fumble from him. I always like Juju, you know. I like the quotes I hear from him and stuff like that. But at this point, he's not one of the top guys I root for. And Von Bell, after saying that he was going to blow him up and he was going he was going to hit him this game, Forcing that fumble, it was pretty nice. You know, I like to see it. And, you know, after seeing Josh Allen talk about, we work, we don't dance. That's what I like. That's that's my type of football players. But, you know, Juju, we'll see if he continues to do it. But they've got bigger problems than the TikToks, man. Because that passing game, that was the one thing they had consistently offensively. That passing game, Ben Roethlisberger slinging it to Chase Claypool and even Juju and Deontay Johnson and... Look, last couple weeks, it's been receivers dropping passes, which for me, I always say that's not panic time because you figure NFL receivers are going to end up drop. It, they're going to end up catching more passes than they drop. They'll, they'll get it figured out. But tonight, they did get it figured out. And Big Ben, he threw one interception, but it really could have been four because they if that Bengals defense could just catch the interceptions and if they didn't call back that one for a pass interference, it could have been even uglier. And... The passing game is something that when you get to December, you can't have a lot of faith in that to get turned around and get going good because the elements are only going to come in more and more. And newsflash for the Steelers, they're going to have a home game the first week in the playoffs. And it's not going to be a nice, calm, 60-70 dome-style game. It's going to be frigid out in Pittsburgh in the, in the end of December, early January. So this, that's worrisome for them to not have that passing game together. And I always said, when the, even when the Pittsburgh Steelers were going good, I said... They at least need to get they need to get that running game a little better, get it going better for when it playoff time comes around. Ed, it has deteriorated to absolutely nothing in that running game. You can't even rely on them to pick up a yard on third and fourth downs. It has gotten bad, and the, now their defense. You know the pass defense. It's always good. You know that's that's what they have even more than their passing offense. Their passing defense, Minka Fitzpatrick and those guys, they're reliable. But their run defense. It has gotten bad. And that brings us to the Bengals, who you just have to applaud their game plan for tonight. You just have to applaud it because I always get so mad watching these teams like Drew Locke and the Broncos where they want to have him throw the ball 40, 50 times. You signed Melvin Gordon in the offseason. You have Philip Lindsay, who's a great young back. Why are you going into the game trying to throw the ball every down with Drew Locke? And if you don't have a top-tier quarterback, you should be trying to run the ball almost every down to start the game. And if that doesn't work, then try to start going, start to go into throwing. But that's why you have to applaud this Zach Taylor and this Bengals team for sticking the ball in Giovanni, Barney, Giovanni Bernard's hand and using Ryan Finley as a runner more than a thrower because that's the one spot in the Steelers' defense that's open. And since Joey B's gone down, Joey Burrow's gone down, those quarterbacks that have been backing them up have not been able to do it through the year. So applaud them for focusing on running that football. And, oh boy, could the Steelers not stop it, man. I had a feeling that the Steelers might come back and make it happen, but they just looked down and defeated. And for the Bengals, I've always been on you know, on the side of, I don't know if Zach Taylor's the guy. You know, usually two years into it, you start to see a team start to form, you know, start to show something, get an identity of some sort. You know, at this point, even the Giants with Joe Judge, you know, they're not a very talented team. They have a good defense, a good defensive line, but they're really young. And but and they're not they don't have a great record, but you can see that they're getting more competitive, they're getting better and better. And these Browns, they haven't really shown that. They said, This is better than a two win team. This team's better than their record. And I'm thinking, not really. 
anything, all the games that they didn't lose, it was basically just because Joey Burrow carried them. But this game, it was very well game planned. They didn't make Ryan Finley do too much. And this Pittsburgh Steelers team, they weren't able to stop that running attack. So Zach Taylor, we'll see how he finishes off this season. But it's, you know, Joe Burrow did play very well under him. So it might not be time to get let him go. You know, I always like holding on to a coach when you're in doubt because having to change coaches every year, that is never good for a young quarterback. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, like, and then subscribe. Yes, sir.